the top of the Eastern Conference. And that's uh, now that kind of the all starting fives were kind of set between the Celtics, Bucks, uh, Sixers, and Knicks. Now it's kind of a competition as to who's got the best starting five. So I wanted to I have it laid out for you guys. So I wanted to get your guys' take on this. So the starting fives of all four of the teams that everyone thinks are going to be at the top of the East. Uh, Sixers, obviously, we know Maxi, Ubre, PG, Caleb Martin, and Bede, Celtics, Holiday, Derek White, uh, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, uh, Chris Dobbs, Knicks, Brunson, Bridges, Hart, OG, and Randall. Um, that's the interesting one, Randall being a five for them. Um, and then you got Bucks, Lillard, Gary Trent, uh, who got signed this week, uh, Chris Middleton, Giannis, and Brooke Lopez as their uh, starting five. So, guys. I'm just curious, how do you think our starting five matches up to the rest of the Eastern Conference as far as the the, the top four, um, the top four Eastern Conference contenders? I think we can beat any of those teams, um, but I do think that those teams can beat us. I, I think it's very how you're playing and key matchups, and um, but I do believe that we can we can match up against any of these guys. Um, I think that we would obviously have to earn it. I think home court would may matter, you know, kind of how the season has gone. Um, but, uh, but it's tough. I mean, I, I don't, I, I see that, you know, I see that any of all these matchups, I'm like, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we matched up and we won the series. Um, but on the other hand, that's, you probably have to beat two of them to go to the finals. Um, yeah. And that's not going to be – and that wouldn't be easy. Yeah, you have to earn it next year for sure. Yeah. I think we – I think we match up better against – as this on screen, I think we match up better against the uh, Celtics and Knicks because we resemble each other a little more in the, in the uh, starting five makeup. Um mm-hmm. sh- not as big players, but pretty balanced and long. All the guys are long. Um, not as traditional in the starting four department as the Bucks, for instance, who have the Giannis at four, Lopez at five, and Lopez. And, yeah, and Lopez. I think matching up with them is the biggest difference between us and the Knicks and Celtics, though, because the Knicks and Celtics have the flexibility, if they want to, to go to a more traditional starting five, uh, put Randall at four and Mitch at five, and then Celtics can put Porzingis at four and Horford at five. We don't have that. Like that is that is our squad, more or less. We don't have a traditional four on our team to be able to do that. I mean, I guess you could say right now you could put Drummond at five and then beat at four, but now we're already talking about a walkie five right there. We're doing that. That doesn't I know some people have advocated for that, but that doesn't make sense to me. Um, so currently as constructed. We don't have a team to play the bigger, more traditional game. We only have kind of the small ball game. Um, so hopefully, I think we all talked about that being one of the major things that, whether it's now with that men or a uh, trade for the, the, the balloon KJ contract at midseason, that we need more of the traditional kind of bigger four to be able to play with that kind of flexibility. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's what I've said before. Like I, I just I, I think it'll come down to matchups, and then, you know this is assuming that all of these teams are healthy, which almost never happens. But I would love to see it. It does. It you know it do happen. Um, just from a loving basketball perspective. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I said, I think we we can we can. We can't beat in any of these teams, but it wouldn't be easy. It wouldn't be easy at all. Um, all four of these teams and can can see themselves going to the finals. Um, and this isn't counting the team that that went to the conference finals last this past season. I know. Um, that that also had injuries themselves. Yeah, and you know a team that you know that's been in the top four or five. The last couple of years that had injuries also. Yeah. That's not counting a Orlando team that was ahead of us and and went out and got a the perfect glue guy that teams have won a championship with. 
So he's tough. Yeah, it's it's um those, those those first round games now are um even looking tough. Yeah. CD in home court will matter. Yeah, like it always does. Big time this year. Yeah, because what you don't want, what you don't want is to get out of the top four and have to play three of these teams. That's yeah. what you don't want. That's yeah. the worst case. Because that's the worst case right there. So yeah. if you can stay in the top four, play Orlando, even though yeah they're up and coming. Get by Orlando, then play the winner of one of these two. That's that's a win, right? Uh, or or yeah. you know one of those teams. Um. So yeah. What do you make as we're talking about um, kind of the variety and then the the, the the lineups that we could put out there? Do you guys think there's a chance that we could ever see a uh, Bona getting like good rotational minutes at the four? I mean, based on the way he's played defensively in the summer league, I know it's summer league difference of competition and talent, but do you think a lot of that can be transferred over to uh, playing like solid minutes, uh, rotation minutes in the in the season, Eric? I think it'll have to be proven during the season. I mean, I'm not going to go. I don't think they're going to go by summer league. I think in camp, he's going to have to show it. Um, playing with Joel, you don't necessarily have to be a spot up big because Joel kind of, you know, spaces out. So you could still be a rim threat and play around the rim a little bit more. Um, Soder and the Paul Reed, but that was the biggest gripe when for most people about Paul was he didn't go out and stretch and shoot threes when he was in there in, when, in there with Joel. Um, I don't necessarily – I don't see it. I didn't envision that with him, but who knows what he has in this package or what he can develop. So I think camp will determine that and, and the season's play will determine that. But I anticipate Drummond backing up Joel and him um, kind of being behind those guys. That's sort of how I envision it. Which that alone right there, he'll get plenty of playing times because Joel will miss probably 20 something games. You got Drummond starting those games and Bona will be the main backup. So he'll he'll get he'll get he'll get his run. He'll get some he'll get some opportunities during the season, like you guys always do. I just don't see him earning consistent rotation minutes yeah. alongside Joel. When everyone's when, healthy. When everyone's healthy, yes. Yeah. Should be interesting Eastern Conference. Um race here and like like you mentioned i don't think you guys even mentioned cleveland I and mean, cleveland's another team in there who i mean like yeah yeah i said Cle- of- i said cleveland i said the team that's been in the top four or five the last two or three years so yeah and they yeah. were and they and they were injured so yeah yeah, yeah. uh, uh one team that's always kind of thrown around in there uh miami miami's do we see that uh, do we, Look, do we, we see don't that? we don't even have to we don't even have to mention miami because we know what miami have done to the, <laughs> these top teams that list that that's, that's on that list, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we know what they've done. So you got Miami, but we'll just name them. You got Miami, you got Cleveland, and you got the Pacers, who who beat Orlando Eight. on that list. And then we have Orlando that's sitting right there that that got some experience, got tons of talent, and like yeah. I say, they got that glue guy that has helped two teams win a championship. So they're going to be in there. And yes, that's, that's that's eight right there, and it's always a wild card somewhere. Yeah, you know, I don't know who that could be, but it's always one. Yeah, probably a wild card somewhere. But if that if I had to guess, those would be the other. Yeah, those would be the eight, just to make, depending eight. on which which order. Yeah, it does take a little, at least right now in my mind, it does take a little bit of a dip after that because Bulls, I don't know what they're doing at this point. Yeah, Atlanta's kind of reshuffling, so who knows what's happening with them, but. I mean, yeah, you never know. Yeah, but the top, the but you guys agree though. The four we just talked about, for injuries aside, that should be the four, the top four in the East. You believe? That's who I would expect to be the top four, but it um, would not surprise me if Cleveland and the Pacers were right there and took it from someone. Would you put Celtics in tier one and the other three teams, us, New York, and Milwaukee, in tier two? Or only from the re- only only from the aspect of winning the championship. If, but, if Boston went if Boston went to the finals and didn't win, I don't think they're any different than anyone else. Okay, but the fact that they won, you have to put them ahead of everyone else. So accolades aside, just these that roster 
as we saw it on screen. You would agree that roster. That that roster, I think, is very beatable. Okay, I think okay. it's very beatable. They, they, they play primarily six guys, seven maybe. I think that roster is be- very beatable. Um, I, I think that if they play those teams that's on that list healthy, it's different. They didn't play any of those teams healthy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. True. It's gonna be an interesting season. It's gonna be it's gonna be a fun season for sure. It's gonna be action packed in the Eastern Conference. I love it. I just hope everyone stays healthy. Yeah, that's hopefully it's the ultimate goal for every team. Everyone can stay healthy throughout this thing. (laughs) 